and I would also say that, like, this is definitely not to scare people or scare listeners. I just wanted to serve as a sort of reminder or a nudge to do a little homework before we have these procedures done. I mean, you have a very famous client who's come you know, very public on something that's, that went wrong with her, not from you, but you fixed it with Kybella. Yeah, yes, sure. Um, what's, what's the story with Kybella? What is it and where is it going wrong? I know it works for some people, but who's a good candidate for it and why does it go wrong? Kybella is a fat melter. It's a chemical that disrupts the uh, fat cell and makes it kind of rupture, okay? So here's the issue. The issue is- And most people want to use it under their chins, correct? That's where it's marketed by the company. Now, the issue is most lay people who don't like what they have under here like maybe me and you. Yeah, the turkey uh, gobbler. I hate it. Right? You know, you know, I always talk about it. Well, guess what? <laughs> Neither, both of us complain of that. Neither one of us would, Kybella would hurt both of us. It would make us both look worse because fat is not your problem. It's not my problem. Okay. Fat, there's most people, unless you have a weight problem, unless you are really overweight. So if you have extra weight on your body, it could potentially be a good option for you. But if, if you don't have extra weight, it could be an issue. Like Kelty. That is Kelty correct. Knight. That so she, her correct. body fat was too low to remove body fat or what they thought was correct. body fat. Correct. It's no different than doing liposuction. It's no different. It does the same thing. It's even more, it, it's even more aggressive than liposuction because at least with liposuction, you can con- control the amount of fat you're reducing. And even when we do liposuction on people who need it, which is not many under here, there's many other things we do. There aren't many people who are, who are liposuction candidates under here, not many. But even when we do it, we're controlling what we take. With Kybella, there's no control. It just- Well, because there, isn't there also a difference between fat and skin? A huge difference. Yeah, like my skin is sagging because I don't have enough elasticity, but that's not fat. And guess what happens if you melt away the fat that's there? The elasticity gets worse and the skin gets saggier. So then I have like a beard turkey gobbler. That's right. So that's, <laughs> that's cute. Healthy. That's cute. Healthy was never a candidate for Kybella. That was a, a complete misdiagnosis by whoever did it. And of course it was right. not surgeon or somebody familiar with facial anatomy was some, you know, whoever, right, some right, right. Non, you know, whatever. So, so the problem is it's probably the most common misconception that I see people come in and say, doc, I got so much fat here. I hate it. I can tell you on, in all honesty, Sarah, nine out of 10 people, maybe, maybe, maybe 95 out of a hundred people I see who say, I don't, I have too much fat here. Don't 95 out of maybe five out of a hundred. So if you're, so basically if you're listening and you don't have extra weight on your body and someone tells you to get Kybella, perhaps you need to get a second opinion from a board certified somebody. Absolutely. Okay. That's a good, that's good. That's good. Because I hear Kybella a lot. Yes. If you are overweight, if you truly are overweight and have an excess of subcutaneous fat, then it might be a reasonable option, provided that you're young and have good skin elasticity. Even if you're overweight and have a ton of extra fat underneath your chin, but you're over 45, if you remove that fat and don't tighten the skin, the skin's still gonna sag because you have no you have poor elasticity over 45. If you're 20 or 25 and you have a bunch of extra fat, well then yeah, you can melt away that fat no right. problem. Up and view. So, so it's so Kybella is very specific for very specific very, people, and I think that specific. that's I think that's one of the golden nuggets here is sometimes with the marketing of plastic surgery or certain kind of techniques or procedures, you're led to believe that you're going to get a solution that might, and you might end up with something worse. So maybe do a little bit of extra homework before you end up like a Kelty where she has to come into you and get, you know, a, a small neck lift because it's the correct. only way to correct the drooping correct. skin from the Kybella. Yeah. The, the complications when people have Kybella and they didn't need it, they look really bad. Wow. Really, okay. really, really bad. And so, and then, and then you have to ask yourself the question, let's say you are a Kybella candidate. 
let's say you're 25 years old and, you just, and you're 30 pounds overweight and you do have a bunch of fat here and you can't lose that weight and this makes you self-conscious. So, okay, let's say you are a Kybella candidate. Well, then the question is, do you do liposuction or do you do Kybella? Let's talk about them for just a second. Yeah. Kybella requires uh, a series of injections every month for five or six months. Okay, wow. so every month you're coming for injections. After Kybella injections, for two weeks, you are extremely inflamed and swollen. For two weeks, you can barely, you barely are presentable for two weeks after your Kybella injection. Then after two weeks, it kind of goes down. So you have two good weeks, then you come and you gotta do it again. For two weeks, you look like a bullfrog. Right. So for five months, every two weeks, you're pretty much unpresentable. Okay, to get whatever questionable result you can get. If you do liposuction, it's a 25 minute local anesthesia procedure. You have a, a wrap for three days and you're good to go. Is there a big cost difference? Uh, that, dep- I, that I couldn't. I but couldn't do you think argue. that, do you think people are choosing Kybella because it seems less surgical? Yes, they're choosing Kybella because they seems like there's less downtime when there is a hundred times greater downtime if you add up all the hours of downtime with Kybella versus submental liposuction. So if it's me and I need it, submental liposuction, it's not even a, it's not even a question. Boom, local anesthesia, numb me up, boom, boom, suck, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Wear a pre- painless, wear a pressure wrap for three days, you're off to the race. Yeah, I also think it's a good message, not that we're trying to promote surgery, but that people, sh- if you're trying to improve your aesthetic and you want the least amount of downtime with the best effect, I know we try to avoid the word surgery, but it seems like in some cases it would actually be a, more of a positive than a negative. Yeah, Cabela's got a lot of downtime. Yeah. A ton of- Tons of hours of downtime. Wow.